This is the What Podcast. Which bands this year that matter? If you're new to the show, welcome. If we've known you for years, welcome back. Barry Corder, Lord Taco, Brad Steiner, alongside Consequence Podcast Network, uh, Devin Gaffillion this week. Festival first timers, uh, we did almost Monday last week, which, uh, you know, I think that we need to start doing, Barry, a ranking of hair. If we could rank our guest hair, who would have the best hair of all time? Paul Janeway? <laughs> He's in the running. Is he? Yeah, is he? everything about that man is in the run. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I don't know if I don't know if he's going to make the top five of uh, guests with hair. Um, he's in the conversation. Ball cap guy though. I mean, it's Taco and it's Paul Janeway. You're very good uh, guys in hats. Guys that look yeah. good in hats. So uh, today we talk a part two of our festival first timers episode. Last week, almost Monday. If you didn't get a chance to listen back to that. The kids are, you know, on the precipice of, you know, possibly making it, right? They've, they've got a shot. They've got, you know, a, a hit on the radio. They've got all everything working for them. They look the part. They sound the part. Now it's just about, you know, actually getting the right song. And I don't want to get too out in front of us, but finding the right song is the hardest part for all of these artists. No matter who you are, getting that right song to hit, to sink, to, to, to cut through the noise is the hardest part. So in an effort to try and figure out how to find that right song, Almost Monday's a and guy is going to talk to us next week, Barry Quarter. Pretty cool. I just, yeah, everything about that was fun. I went back yeah. and listened, and uh, I, I, I was proud of us. And you, if you remember, we all said, you know what? I used to hate these type of guys. The 16, 17 year olds yeah. that have the, the world by the tail, and they do, but they're great ki- uh, kids. They were they're great. Kids. There was a lot they're of kids. fun. They are kids, yeah. uh, but they're very good. And uh, to, to have the A and R guy, I can't wait to talk to him to see what he's looking for. Yeah, um, and I'll I'll explain what that show is going to be uh, coming up in a little bit. But first, let's talk about our festival first timer guest this week, Devin Gaffillion. I love this man. I love this man. And uh, we talked about it in the Almost Monday episode, but I will repeat it. As a radio guy who gets pitched, you know, having artists come by all the time, not in in a pre-COVID world, of course, but having, being pitched, having artists come by all the time, you get very tired of this. You know, you have to pretend to care. You know, it's uncomfortable. You got to eat, you know, crappy delivery pizza. You know, it's just... It becomes too much work. Well, there was a day where my music director at the time said no to an artist named Justin Bieber when Bieber was 16. So I, (laughs) at that moment, said, we will say no to no one ever again. Now, that proved to be very laborious. Uh, We've said yes to way (laughs) too many, way too much garbage. Um, One of which, she's on a reality show right now. She'll remain nameless. But it, it was a disaster on every level. And it almost made me want to leave the industry. But we keep pushing forward. One of the guys that came by years after that decision was Devin Gaffillion. And at the time, I just remember saying, this guy is so gregarious. He's so happy. He's uh, just a bucket of energy. I don't know if he's got it, but he sure as hell wants I want to be his friend. I want to hang out with that guy. Yeah. Who would have known that a few years later he would be nominated for a Grammy? First shot this. out of the first shot out of the cannon, the guy's got a Grammy nomination. I love this interview. I told you when we when he, we hung up that it's one of my favorites ever, uh, and I and I I mean that sincerely. And I've done this a long, long, long time. Interesting. He was just a lot of fun, and and the music is great. Uh, I'm the fact that he goes at and tackles Marvin Gaye. Mm-hmm. I mean, we talk about that. That's a pretty bold. Yeah. <laughs> that's a pretty bold reach right there. Yeah. Let's go do Marvin Gaye's what's going on. He could have covered Devo, but he chose <laughs> well, Marvin Gaye. Rock and Gay. roll inductees, by yeah. the way. Yeah. So um, it is, it's remarkable. So he puts out his first album and it's critically acclaimed. It's Grammy nomination for his second album, you know, where most artists really fumble 
and he talks about that that fear that he had writing that second album, he decided to say, no, I'm not going to write a second album. I'm going to cover one of the most iconic albums of all time in a moment where it really, really matters. And he covered the entire Marvin Gaye What's Going On album. And it's, uh, I don't know. If you're starting to pay attention, he's getting a lot of attention for it. I mean, I, as soon as we hung up from that conversation, Barry, I turned on CNN, they were doing a story on him. You know, if you keep your eyes open a little bit, you're going to see this guy starting to pop up everywhere because this album is getting a lot of attention. Yeah, let me tell you one of my favorite interview quotes ever. I ask, and I don't remember who, and I wish I could because I would give him credit because it's brilliant. I ask about the sophomore jinx, basically. It's the second album. Because what happens is you've got a guy, and he says he had his whole life to write his first album, right? What a great quote that is. But then the second one, you're on the road, you're touring, you know, and I, I mentioned that to whoever this person was. And they said, yeah, nobody cares that your bus drivers had a bad day. <laughs> it really <laughs> you know is I mean? true. That's you what just... becomes the sophomore album. It's all about life on the road. And life on the road. road. Yeah. <laughs> nobody cares. <laughs> no, I've got a friend. I got a friend of mine. Uh, Taco knows a friend of ours, too. Uh, every time he hears somebody talking like that, he always goes, nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> a little dramatic. Top, yeah, a little dramatic. <laughs> it's so it's so true though, because when you ran out of things to write about, what do you start writing about? Well, let me look around. Um, yeah, potted bus. plants. Let me been go on with this potted bus plants for thirteen months. Yep. <laughs> Every hotel right. looks the same. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. <laughs> All right. So. Uh, Devin Gaffillion today on the What Podcast. Uh, I really like this conversation. I think you're going to like it too. Uh, but first, before we get into Devin Gaffillion, I wanted to run through some some headlines, some consequence headlines. So uh, there were some announcements made in the past couple of weeks of music festivals that are at least in our wheelhouse. I have never been to Firefly, but I know people that have, and I have heard nothing but wonderful things about it. Um, they put out a lineup that very, I don't know if you know, but I work at a radio station. I run an alternative radio station and the state of alternative radio right now in 2021 is, uh, it's a bit tough. Uh, <laughs> it is not at its peak performance. That is for sure. And it's a lot of artists that don't necessarily, we, we, we don't really know if they're going to be anything. And there are a lot of what I call faceless artists. Well, that is the Firefly lineup from top to bottom. I am more interested in if Firefly sells out than maybe any other festival in the country. They put out a lineup that is my station's playlist from top to bottom. Okay. You know, aside from, you know, the Lizzo's and, and you know, um, the Wiz Khalifa's of the world. But, man, you go through there, they might play... 40, they might have 45 artists that I play on that lineup. So will you get an accurate perception of what alternative radio is right now by the way that this thing sells in Dover, Delaware? I think so. Okay. I think that you're going to get a good idea as to, to if these artists really... I like Cannons. Cannons had a number one single uh, on the alternative charts. I don't know if anyone in America knows who Cannons are. Yeah. Barry, do you know Cannons? No. No. That's an Taco, interesting question. Taco, ever heard of Cannons? No. Exactly. Yeah, they had number one single. Yeah, number one single. This is what I'm saying. Like you go through some of this lineup, Barry, and uh, tell me tell me your first impressions. Uh well, you got Billy Eilish on top, Killers, Tame Impala, Lizzo. By That's the way, pretty... the Killers on every lineup for yeah. the rest of mankind, for the rest of history. We've got Tame at uh, Bonnaroo. That, I mean, that's pretty, and Lizzo, that's pretty strong. Then you got Megan Thee Stallion, Cage, Roddy Rich, Wiz Khalifa, Machine Gun Kelly, and then I'm just looking for names I recognize. Portugal well, this Man, is, Sylvanasso, this is, Glass well, Animals. Well, this is where it gets really interesting for me because uh, I haven't done the math, but uh, there's got to be 50. There's got to be 50 artists on here that I play on my radio station. And um, I have played and interviewed Oliver Tree. He's going to be at Bonnaroo. Um, it's one thing to put Oliver Tree on the Bonnaroo lineup because there's so much around him that's going to support it. But if your entire lineup's full of Oliver yeah. Tree, 
yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't I know it. how this is going to work. I will say, although um, I'm very interested in the Firefly lineup and I really want it to work for my own sake, my own professional sake, and the the format that I've you know put so much of my time and money and investment and and you know self worth into, I just don't see festival lineups other than Hangout that are this targeted that are this yeah. small a, of of diversity there is there is one lane for this lineup and that's it and i think i and you probably know why based on the people that book it they know how to super serve their audiences yeah. the people that book it are the same people that came from hangout festival and if you have been paying attention to the hangout festival lineup for years what do you see over the last five, six, seven years, it has been super targeted to top 40 radio. Yep. Well, Firefly lineup is super targeted to rock and alternative radio. It's a really interesting question. Uh, the Moon River Festival announced this week as well. It's a boutique festival here in Chattanooga. Had the conversation with the co-founder, Drew Holcomb, uh, the other day about which you can go back and listen to our conversation with Jerome. Yes. Do we have that up or is, was it so bad that we had to take it down? <laughs> I don't remember if that was one of those that just got lost in the trash heap. It does seem like we had some sort of sound issues with yeah. that one, but he was great. Yes, um, he was. but, um, point being, you know, they had to cancel like everybody and rework their whole schedule. So my question to him was how easy was it putting it together? And when did you start? And he said like seven weeks ago, Wow, so he had seven weeks to put together a full lineup, a two day festival. Um, you know, so point being, do you just take who's available? I mean, how much can you actually curate at this what point? What did he say to that? Uh, he said it was a bit of a scramble for sure. But it was is, fun. Is that, why, he, is that why for a for a Americana Roots Festival they all of a sudden have Doctor Dog on the lineup? Uh, you know, Doctor Dog actually does pretty well here in China. Yes, I know so. they do, but it doesn't fit with Wilco. Well, but it's that uh, to your point. I mean, do you, again, and I didn't ask him based on this uh, Firefly question that you're posing, but it's an interesting question. You, you know, at some point you you got to take best available. I yeah. would think, um, just to run through real quick, Wilco, Lord Huron, Drew, uh, Lake Street Drive, Old Crow, Old Crow, Dr. Dog, Indigo Girls, Hippocampus, mm. Dawes, Coin, Shovels and Rope, Yola, and then... Oh, my God. You know, yeah, I mean, look, the, the star of that coming out of that weekend is going to be Yola. Um, just put, put every dime that you have on it, Barry. But every dime on, on the, that you have that you're going to walk out of... Chattanooga, Tennessee, in love, praying at the feet, falling down around Yola. She right. is magic yeah. beyond imagination. Yeah, and there's a lot of others uh, in the undercard that he mentioned that he's very excited about. I mean, obviously he's selling his event, but uh, he put to, he's put together pretty good lineups in the past. Look, so, but your question is, and we talked about this eight, nine, ten months ago. You know, how will they come out of this when everybody's trying to have a festival in September and October? Yeah. Do you take best available or do you, you know, can you curate something? So I think it's a really good question to see how Firefly sells. That's well, a good question. Yeah. I mean, look, Bonnaroo sells out uh, that these boutique festivals are going to sell out mainly because they're your regional festival. They're their, your regional spot where you can drive to pretty easily, get a hotel pretty easily, maybe drive back home pretty easily. I. The ones that blew me away, not only Bonnaroo selling out, but for for a 180,000 <laughs> cap music festival to sell out in Vegas is beyond comprehension to me beyond comprehension yeah. and it's you know in the middle of the summer um firefly is is interesting to me for me personally i don't know if it's interesting to anybody else these boutique festivals though you know i said this last week and the week before it is the era of the great festival lineup we are in a world where you can look around and see a great lineup. I mean, we could make one. We could we could make a great festival lineup on my porch, and it would work. 
Yeah. It would absolutely work. We are just in that era because of what Drew said. You know, you get you just, you just throwing some stuff against the wall because people are available. Um, but with that being said, it's going to be hard for them to sell tickets. You know, I do worry that if it's going to if if the big ones sell out, it almost feels well. That makes sense. This boutique festival in Chattanooga, the boutique festival in Iowa City, Iowa. Do they get the runoff? Does it trickle down to them? Do well, or or do they well, already have a built-in audience that's going to come back no matter what? Uh, don't put let's don't put words in Drew's mouth or or mine. I, uh, that's not. I what would he never said. put anything in your mouth, Barry. <laughs> that's not what he said. Was that you know that's how this lineup was built? I I'm just raising the question. And and raised it to him. No, he's happy. He's very happy with this lineup. I'm happy with this it's lineup. Good. It's really yeah, good. it's very good lineup. Uh, I'm I just posing the question for some of these festivals. Does that become a a problem? You know, because they're all booked. But I, I guess it, part of what we're seeing seeing, like you said, with um, um, oh, who was it? Um, who was it? You said is everywhere tame. Killers. Oh, the killers killers um is they've been dormant for so long not just them but a lot of acts and they want to play a and the other thing drew said which i did find interesting is typically the radius clause is a factor and pretty much everybody's playing nice so you're gonna see really bands on multiple festivals where or or even venues like in you know near you that you wouldn't see in the past what where's ally can we call ally and ask her can we yeah, ask question see it? what she's seeing when it comes to to booking and and radius clauses look i i think that the festival line i might be talking out of both sides of my mouth here and and frankly i'm, I'm not thinking i am i always do but I, if if the festival world it may just be so insulated that there's no way things don't do well. It's the it's the right. theater shows that I'm worried about. Maybe I'm I, I need to refine exactly what I'm trying to say. I don't necessarily worry too much about festivals. I am interested in what happens in in Delaware with Firefly because of my own professional interest. But I'm worried more about the offspring coming to the Fillmore. To be honest with you, I'm more worried about you know Moon Taxi coming to the Joy Theater. Uh, because when all of these shows start hitting, and the reason why you're seeing so many of them announced now for you know six, eight months in the future is because they need your dollar now because yeah. they don't know if they're going to get your dollar in two months, which is why I am stunned as to what's happening with Lollapalooza. When I was told that they were going to announce the lineup a month ago, they were doing it because they were trying to get in front of everybody. Yeah. Now they're not only going to be at the back end of everything, but they're going to have two months to make this thing work. Yeah. Two months to sell it out, to sell 100,000 tickets. The good city, point about the venues. The city wants it. The city is dying for it. They're trying to move heaven and earth to make it happen. I have a feeling it'll do just fine. But the local venues around, I mean, how well would the Metro do in Chicago when – the dollar has been stretched so unbelievably thin. Yeah. You know, you get to November and December or frankly, even October, you know, you've got people who have already milked their budget for, you know, this festival, another festival, three other shows. And I can see a hundred bands. You know, at a right. festival. Right. Uh, it is, it is. You know. Yeah. I mean, it, I think that's that maybe that's what I'm most worried about instead of, you know, festivals. I don't think I don't think the festival world is is hurting too bad. I mean, at the end of the day, legitimate question. I mean, at the end of the day, let's be honest. I mean, AT&T solves a lot of problems. You know, a a check from, you know, big corporate sponsor really goes a long way. You know, when when PBR is now the sponsor of Moon River, things get a little easier. You know, you can breathe. Yeah, it's sort of like breathe. getting a stimulus check, you know? You get that stimulus check at the man like, okay, yeah. Yeah. That helps. You're right. Doesn't solve all the problems, but it sure as hell helps. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And it's the the grants and all the other things that are coming in. So yeah. Yeah. All right. We've got uh we got some more consequence news uh coming up here in a second, but I want to get into the um to the Devin Gavillian chat if you guys don't mind. You wanna you wanna get into this? Let's do it. It's fine.
Can you hear me now? There he is. There we go. Oh, yes. What's yes. going on, Brad? How you doing, Barry? I know Barry, Barry and Russ disappeared. They, I can't see him anymore. You know what? That's going to make Barry very unhappy because he's in a hair war with me right now. And he doesn't understand <laughs> I'm killing that. it today, man. He doesn't understand it. that the winner of the hair war keeps ah, winning the there it is. There the we go. The guest keeps winning the hair war. Devin comes in with a... Barry's definitely winning. I'm sorry. I'm nah, sorry, Brad. Is strong. Ooh, how, <laughs> dare <you. laughs> how dare you. How dare you. It's I'm strong. So, I'm so I'm so happy to see you again. I'm um so happy for you. I'm so happy for your success. I can't believe what the last year has been for you. Um Oh man. This is it's weird to it's isn't it a little weird to find the most success in your career in maybe the worst possible year of life? <laughs> oh my oh a- absolutely. Am I Absolutely. okay? Can I can I be happy for a second? Am I allowed? <laughs> no, I mean like it's weird because you know as terrible as terrible as, as this year has been, you know there has been so many beautiful things that that came out of it and necessary beautiful things. You know, like getting out of the abusive relationship with our president that was pretty cool. Getting out of that. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, <laughs> you know, I don't I don't know what you're talking up. about. This podcast is sponsored by QAnon. <laughs> uh, we don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I I like quit watching the news pretty much, and I don't watch. Uh, you know PBS. why? Because you can breathe, Barry. I That's because breathe. we can finally <laughs> say we don't need to watch the news every day. We can finally say, oh, thank God, this is over. That thing's yeah. over. Yeah, I mean, there's still important stuff happening, but I, not like every day. So, yeah, 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 yeah man. A, I, mean, I mean, it is. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Brad. I didn't mean no, to okay. interrupt you. I, I mean, it, it is like the news. It, it, it really does feel like we can chill. Like we can watch the news every uh, we can catch up on yeah. the news every other day. Yeah. You know, like right. it, it as opposed to just like getting yelled at and tweeted at. I mean, really my hard. doom scrolling doesn't exist anymore. You know, I, <laughs> the the thing that I'm obsessed about with our president is no longer, you know, drinking bleach. It's man, he's a giant compared to the Carter family. Uh, I'm, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm obsessed about a right? pressure and not, you know, what we're. I didn't know Biden him. was so huge. It, it, like, well, he must be like nine to ten feet tall. I guess it is. The, it is. Damn near the funniest photo I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I am obsessed with this photo. Like, when did the Carters live in like Lilliput- the movie Lilliput- Elf? What are the Lilliputian? <laughs> when did they become Lilliputian? <laughs> I mean, even yeah. the even the teacups are teeny tiny. You know, poor Rosalind. Oh. Her head is the size of Joe Biden's hand. It is the greatest <laughs> photo I've ever seen. I, I, you know, I, I love I love Devin so much, and uh, I would say this even if he wasn't uh, a part of the show. I um. I'm so excited about his show. I'm so excited about him hitting the bottom lineup. I love the fact that he's sort of like the show for Thursday for me. But I want to start, if you don't mind, Devin, for the people that don't know who you are. Yes. Can you just give me the the ABC of what, who, why Devin is Devin? So, yeah, ABC. Let's go. Um, right. <laughs> I I love, you know, I'm a, I'm a product of so many things are rhythm and blues rock and roll psychedelic rock soul uh folk every you know gospel uh but you know mark i would say my two north stars are marvin gay and Jimi hendrix and you know i i i want to i want to touch the world the way that they did and and, and do it in 2021 you know and 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 you know i i i'm from outside of philly Born in a little small town in Morton, Pennsylvania, grew up playing music up, up, you know, just kind of like dilly dallying with some bands here, here and there. And my dad's a music, a, a wedding singer, so you know I he didn't was. Know a, that. Oh yeah, yeah. He's he's there the one. Is. He's the one who got me into it. You know. There it is. I was and, gonna ask. Yeah. yeah. There had to be a yeah wedding. What a perfect. I mean, you're gonna hear all kinds of stuff from a wedding singer, right? Oh man, he was. I remember watching my dad learn Nelly. It's getting hot in here, like when that came out, and that was the goofiest, funniest thing I've ever seen to watch him yeah. 
watch him rap that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, funny, son, I'm doing this for the white women. Uh, <laughs> was, it, was it cringe worthy kind of funny for you? I mean, oh, it was cringe. Oh, cringy, <laughs> cringe, funny. Like it was, it was the most cringe worthy funny. But, it, but, but also, you know, he also was singing Earth, Wind, and Fire, Stevie Wonder, and Ray Charles, and you know, all the Michael Jackson, and and you know, all those cats, and the jet, like all those, you know, Ar M Marvin, and and the Temptations, all the Motown stuff. So that that's all the soul I got it from from Pops from Nelson. So, so Lord Taco and Barry, you know this well about me. Uh, but you know, if if not for you know '60s soul. I don't know if I'm the person that I am. Uh, if not for Syl Johnson and Otis oh. Redding and Otis Clay, I'm not the person I am. But to me, the one that doesn't get any of the credit is um, the king of Philly soul, Mr. Solomon Burke. Uh, oh, man. And one of the greatest shows I've ever seen at Bonnaroo was one of the final shows that Solomon Burke ever had. I mean, it was oh. one of these moments where I looked around and, Devin, there might have been, I don't know, 85 people there. She Nobody knew what Solomon Burke was, and they didn't know what in the world was was happening on stage. But uh, when I think when I think of you, I think of the King of Philly Soul, uh, Mr. Solomon Burke. So I'm glad that you, yeah. you rattled off all of the people that that sort of shaped <laughs> me. As, we're essentially the same person, I think, is what I'm trying to say. You and me right? might be the same person. No, yeah, yeah, no, you're my brother from another mother. Come on, sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, did, what a, how, did, how did it get i'm sorry to interrupt but how did you get from philly to nashville how did that story get, come about well you know i was going to school for psychology actually in westchester pennsylvania and then i was like no nah, I, I don't want to be a therapist it's not that's not what i want to do so i applied to uh, programs in the americorps which uh, is kind of like the peace corps but you you work for a nonprofit that's based in the United States. You can go anywhere in the U.S. So I chose, I applied to Nashville, New Orleans, and Austin and got uh, got accepted to the program in Nashville. You're telling me, New Orleans, we missed you by this much? We this, missed you by this much? This yeah. much, man, this much. I would have loved to kick it around NOLA. Yeah. But, but uh, you know, Nashville, I'm really glad that I got, I, I got, ch I basically Nashville chose me, you know, in a way. And uh, if it hadn't, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. So it's crazy. <laughs> the, 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 I love the, the, I was going to go back to the Hendrix and uh, Marvin Gaye because they're, I mean, I heard another band earlier this week, the, the, their three main influences were basically Hendrix and, and Marvin, Soul and Miles Davis. Wow. And I mean, right? I mean, if you if you're gonna go with three bases, that's, that's a pretty the, good mix right there. And that's gonna make a, a nice gumbo right there. That I'll tell yeah, you that. You can from anything. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He is really, really killing my New New Orleans thing, isn't he? He's really <laughs> driving that harder and harder, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> throw some throw some Cajun spice on, on yes. in that one right there, you know. Please do. Please do. <laughs> But no, I mean Jimmy, Marvin, and Miles. I mean, goodness Lord, that's yeah. You you got yourself. That's it, right? Just the whole trinity. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing it again. The New now Orleans funds just can't stop. The Holy Trinity. <laughs> the you guys are really, go back really a, pushing it hard at this point. <laughs> go back a little bit and talk about this last year for you professionally. What's it been like? Man, I, I mean, it's it's been a roller coaster, but. Like I said, like we said earlier, you know, some beautiful things have come out of it. Like, you know, just rediscovering Marvin's "What's Going On" record and and getting to re-record that and get that. Like, invite all my homies in Nashville and some homies from all around the U.S. to come and help me sing on that and raise money for uh, this nonprofit Equity Equity Alliance, which was awesome. They fight voter suppression here in Tennessee, which is, which is crazy. Tennessee is like 45th in voter, voter turnout and registration. So it's like, what? That's, that's where there's only 52 states, right? What, <laughs> what we, what's going on here? 51, you know, like what? So it's, so I, I wanted to, I, I got to get more involved with, with politics in that way, which I really, you know, I love, I, I loved 
I, I, I love learning so much about just, I don't know, the whole process and also how much suppression is, is in this country. And, if, and I guess, too, probably since you did it, the what's going on, uh, you know, Marvin, we all know because it's so smooth and so sexy, but he was, I mean, it's, it's sad, and it, isn't it, in a way that that album still is every bit as powerful? I, it is sad, Barry. I, I really, it's funny, I was telling somebody earlier today, I was like, I wish this, this album wasn't so relevant. Right. I wish it wasn't. You know, I, I, every day we see stuff in the news, black people getting killed by police and then police officers not getting held accountable and, and, and then laws being, you know, just today there was I think 34 different laws being passed in, in, in states for voters, like just killing people with voter suppression. And I mean, they, they actually in Oklahoma, they made it legal to run over protesters. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 as long as you're 21. As long as you're, <laughs> yeah, I know, there, whatever the logic, it makes you no know, sense. I'm sure that, I'm sure that it's not, it's, it's all a little, you know, it it, it 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 is and it isn't what it is on what it looks like, but it is what it looks like. You know, if it smells like it, it tastes like it, it feels like it. It is probably racist. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but Devin, what you're doing though, what you're doing with the what's going on, I don't want to get too too far down that mm -hmm. path just mm -hmm. yet. But but what you're doing with that, what you're doing with, you know, what you're saying now, what you did with your first album, um, it's still therapy. Absolutely. You didn't want to go to school for therapy and to be a therapist, but that's <laughs> essentially what you've become and just translated into a different art form. Brad, absolutely. I mean, it's it, and I, I I wanted to study music therapy specifically, and and I ended wow. up, you know, doing yeah, doing exactly that. And and I and I want to stay true to that as an artist too. Like, I I, I do believe. You know, having a platform, having a label behind me, um, having all these things uh, is it's a responsibility to to use the, to, to 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 heal, because that's what I think music. That's what music is here for. It's to heal people. Well, I mean, I think that's what the first album did. And by the way, the first album. I mean, uh, Black, Black Hole, Hole Rainbow. Rainbow. Black Hole Rainbow. By the way, um, I I can't speak enough of. Uh, but I don't need to. I mean, Barry, it's got a Grammy nomination. I mean, how do you how do you come out of the gate doing that? <laughs> you how know, I'm I, it, I'm so grateful I got to make that record, the make that album the way that I did. I, I got to cook it up with Sean Everett, who's this crazy Canadian cat. He's a producer in, out in L.A. And, um, you know, we just swung microphones in front of amps and trying to cre recreate Leslie sounds and like throwing water on the ground and recording that, like just doing e everything that we could to get the sounds that we wanted. And, and, and also I, it's your, your first album, it's your first album, you get to write it your whole life, you know, it's, which is really nice. Right. <laughs> but That's right. so, so like the songs were, you know, probably, it's it's I say half of them I, I wrote in in like a year within the year or two of, of Black Hole Rainbow, but most of them I I wrote like probably four or five years before that. But yeah. So so what we like to do a little bit here is to um get a, a little bit inside baseball. Uh, when you're talking about getting in the studio and you know whipping microphones around, who is there helping you doctor the songs? Is it a record label representative? Is it a music doctor, or is it, or is a label, or is it a, as a manager? Have they given you complete freedom to say, you know what, see what you get, we'll see what happens with you, kid, and then well, not just freedom, but here's great. here's the here's the money. And yeah, that's usually the key. Right. It's those two things, right? Here's the money to go play because it, it's not cheap. So sorry to jump on, but it's no, a great it question. Sense. No, it is a great question, and honestly, they that they really let me do whatever I wanted to do. You know, they like my A and R for the for Black Hole Rainbow, Chris uh uh, uh um
Chris, he was he was amazing, and 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 he let he really let me come in, and he was hands off. The label was really hands off, and in 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 the creative sense, you know, like I I was in there with Sean and and my band, and that was it, in really? in in the studio that is, you know. So, yeah. how are, how protective are you of that space? Do you let pretty much anyone in, or do you uh, like it to be a very small circle? that's creating in then in that very very vulnerable spot you know it really depends on on who like i typically keep it small but like i i also love when i have friends that i know are creative and and have crazy brains and you know i love for them to be in the room and and to just be be a kind of like a, a meter you know kind of like see mm -hmm. see what they're feeling and 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 see how they're reacting mm -hmm. to the music so so yeah sometimes i bring outside peeps in so you you i mean what you said about you have your whole life to write your first album is great that's so great it's so to sort of add on to the this same conversation now that you've had success we, I mean, we talked to Paul Janaway from St. Paul and the Broken Bones before. There's sort of this, now somebody comes in, knocks on the door, you know, he's a consultant, he's a, he's a VP or whatever, and he wants you to do, you know, old standards maybe. Or, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Well, I don't that know was, how we can that's, make a that lot was, of money. You but know, that like, was the brilliant business move. You know, it fit the time, but now covering Marvin yeah. Gaye, Brilliant second album idea, by the way. Brilliant second album idea. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I, I mean, a little bit more time. Uh, yeah. Time. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I definitely like covering that album. Uh, you know, I, I didn't even think like it's it's weird because I didn't think like, oh, like I want to just cover Marvin Gaye's What's Going On for Fun, you know. It, it was it's not fun. This is not <laughs> no, fun. no, 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 <laughs> no. It was crazy. <laughs> yeah. Like I mean, like that music is unbel. It's so it's jazz, you know. Like it's it's like great. It's it's really complex, and um, you know, I I really so like when I decided to cover it, it was like I I did it because it was a mission to I wanted to get that message out again, and like. Yeah. It, it killed me, like, listening to it and being like, wow. Man, yeah. I didn't even think about, like, yeah. I mean, I said it's hard because of this, the, the sociological impact of everything. The, this, the, but I didn't even think about, as a musician, how hard that is. I didn't even think about that part of it. Like, how much preparation, how much work did it take for you to get it right? And, and with the pressure on top of you saying, oh, if I don't get this right... Uh, Oh, this is this is a this is a very very brave thing you did. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Yeah, no, like it for me. I was I definitely was like, no one's gonna make a record. No one's gonna recreate this album better than the original. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna do my version of it, and I'm gonna get people who are way like way talented than I am too to join me and 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 recreate this album. Mm -hmm. um, because yeah, I there's no way I could have done it by myself. And, and well, how does you know, like with all that being said, how does that translate live? You just did your first show in a year. Um, I yeah. don't know. First off, I however that feels, I can't even Ooh. understand. Ooh. But but how does how does some of that stuff translate live for you? It's got to be you know. And speaking of which, it can't be easy. It can't be easy. I mean, when we when we did. We really, I only got to play what's going on live really once with, uh, for this live stream that we did. And, and I mean, it was so powerful. It was so magical being on the stage with like 12 musicians and playing music live again, even though at that point when we did it, which was back in November, like December, at, or, I'm sorry, it was back in like October um at that point you know there weren't any audience like we were on stage still playing with each other and that felt unbelievable mm -hmm. but as far as like two weeks ago uh i got to we got to play a gig in 
in the highlands of North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And we were outside at this festival, everybody's in their pods and, you know, and their little, little things. And there were, people were going crazy. Like yeah. it was, and it was, yeah. It really, it was magic. It was, it was weird, a little weird, because you're like, you want people to come out of their pods, you know, but you, they can't. <laughs> but like, it was still like, oh my god, like I'm getting energy from let people. Me, let me clear something up. You didn't have 11 people on stage with you at this festival, did you? Are you mm. taking 12 people out on tour with you? Oh no, no, no. Oh, this was <laughs> this two weeks ago. This was He's a, gonna be broke. Oh, I'm so broke. I, I really, I want. <laughs> That is my dream for sure to have like a twelve piece band, you yeah. know. But uh, but right now we're just we're just four piece in it. Okay, all right. Oh to yeah. Say, that that is the, talk. This guy is uh, the bravery is is running up against insanity. I think. If, uh, <laughs> oh yeah. Going to take twelve people on tour with you. What is it? What does the tour look like? What does the rest of the fall and the summer look like? If if this is your first sort of go at it, what's the rest of the year going to be? You know, Brad, we we're slowly gigs are slowly trickling in, and we got some festivals this summer. We got Floyd Fest in Virginia. Uh, we're we're doing a, ah, forget this one festival that we're doing in Kentucky, but we're doing, of course, Bonnaroo. Yeah, you're doing Bonnaroo. Railbird Bonnaroo. is it the one Railbird Rail, in Kentucky? We're not doing Railbird. Okay. I wish we were doing Railbird. All my homies are doing Railbird. Everybody, but, you know, but um, but we got a couple other festivals. Um, and, uh, hopefully fall, we're hoping, hoping something comes through and, yeah. you know, we're, we'll probably do some support in the fall is what we're thinking. Yeah. Very cool. What are you thinking about Bonnaroo? What are you expecting? Oh, I mean, my. you're in Nashville. How much, what, what do you, what do you know yeah. about Bonnaroo? Well, I, I only, I've only been once, really? uh, I've only Which been year? once 2015, 20, and that wow. was that's Billy, yeah, yeah, that was Billy Joel. Kendrick yeah. played "Earth, Wind, and Fire." Great work. My, my morning jacket. Uh, who else? Oh my! I got to see Reggie Watts. Yeah, that was amazing. That was yeah. so good. Um, I mean, all I know is that I'm hella, hella excited and very th grateful that it's in September and not June because you know it's hot. Well, that's Still something we've talked about in the past. I actually be so sure. With, we, I know with you know, with the September. with the global warming that can't be named. Um, I actually think that Tennessee's hotter that? in September than it is in June these days. I think it's hotter <laughs> in September. I think June is now the spring in Tennessee. Uh, you know, last year oh. June fifteenth was like sixty-two degrees during the day. Do you remember that, Barry? It yeah, was unbelievable. Great. The weekend of Bonnaroo. Amazing, best weather ever. I, you know, I actually do. Was that? Are you talking about two years ago? Yeah, last year, the canceled year. Yeah, two, it, it, yeah. it. Last year, yeah, it was. I remember was being because we were supposed to play it, and I remember oh, being yeah. in my backyard and being like, "This would be yeah. so good. Yeah. This yeah. weather, so it was like kicking you, kicking you in the crotch twice, right?" <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Let me so I'm so I'm glad. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I was babe. gonna say we're we were very excited to see your play on Thursday because that's become I mean, <clears throat> every day is our favorite day. But Thursday has become probably one of our favorite days. What's our it's day of discovery? discovery. It's yeah. Discovery Day. Yes. And so you know everybody is so excited. They're pumped. Yeah. That's when you you go find the act that you didn't you know you'd never heard of, and they always are great. So we were really excited, not that we've not heard of you, but excited that you're on that day because it's such a magical day. It, know, I don't know if I, you're I, aware of it. Or, hey, what's, so, what's, the, uh, what's the group like in Nashville for you? What do you who's your group? Do you have a, a good group of musician friends that, um, that, that uh, are, are on the precipice? Who's, who's driving you that way? You know, I have a... I have a I'm I'm lucky. I got like a, a a squad here in Nashville. There's, I get to hang out with uh, Jake, my buddy Jake from Illiterate Light. Have you heard of him? I know Illiterate Light. Yes, they're mm -hmm. um they're uh they've been through my radio station in Chattanooga back in the day when I lived in Chattanooga. Illiterate Light came through the the thing, and they hung out in our parking lot for about half an hour, and they're like, <laughs> so what do we do now? And I said, uh, well. <laughs> 
I drink. Oh beer. man. Uh, so in these moments when I question myself, I start drinking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just start drinking. Light. Poor just little drink. light. Yeah. But Jake and Jeff, Jeff, Jeff's in Virginia, of course. Oh, I forgot. Uh, I hate to interrupt. We've had them on the show, Barry. Yeah, I we, we had them on the, the show. show. Years really? Ago. I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh I man. I totally forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm guys. an idiot. <laughs> oh, hey, listen, I, I have you, my, my brain just farts. My brain farts every. If, if I could smell my brain farts, I'd oh, it'd be. A, I'd smell a very like, smell like roses. Stinky <laughs> life. <laughs> you know? Do you know our? Do you know our guys, Kristen and Jared from Repeat Repeat, the uh, hmm. the 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 theme song writing for the What Podcast? Repeat Repeat. No. Ma'am, yeah, yeah. we need to connect you. We need to connect you with uh, Jared and Kristen. Okay. So nice. um, you need to get them because you're closer to them than I am at this point. But uh, they hate horns. I need you to get them in love with horns. Uh, for some reason, you know, they. You can do it. Oh man, Budos band. Who else? Who else is just like I just love. I mean, who hates horns, man? I Thank know. you. I know. Come I know. on, I, I get like you know like I get it like when every. People always say, get a horn, get a horn section, get a horn set. You know, they yell at me and I'm like, man, like I I, I want it to be different. I want it to be cool. like, not just like a, you know, you throw the sriracha on everything, you know? Sure. Which is why I want to learn how to play the cornet. Ooh, okay. Nobody plays the cornet anymore. Nobody is, <laughs> is playing this teeny tiny, it has one note, you know, you just, it's just like, sounds like That's... a duck call. But I want to learn it, like the recorder, keep, keep the cornet the and the recorder. It'll come in handy. It will. I think so. I think so. <laughs> what else, Barry? What do you got? I love it, man. I can't wait to see you. I'm, I'm so looking forward to it. Who are you looking forward to seeing? Are you, oh. you going to hang around? I mean, you're in Nashville, so I assume you're going to be around. Barry, I'm getting, I am getting a camper and I'm doing it. Are you really? Like, I'm would getting. You like to, would you like to stay at Camp Nut Butter? We have, uh, we have available space at Camp Nut Butter. You can stay in Tacos Bus. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 room. hey, listen, as long as, as long as I get my own little bunk, I'm good to go, man. Oh, hey. yeah. You do. I mean, he crawls in hey. somewhere in the middle of the night. As um, long as I'm Little Spoon, I like to feel the arms. <laughs> like around me Man. you know oh, perfect yeah you have found your match you have found your match with lord taco yeah. <laughs> oh yeah i i want to i mean liz uh, lizzo mm -hmm. i got to see lizzo mm -hmm. um and i mean tame impala is is definitely on my on my top you, you, top see, of my you list. seem you seem uh you, not only do you seem like somebody who cares about the history of all of this but you care about what is happening in of the moment. Who are you listening to right now? Who do you like? Right now, I am listening to Steve Lacey, Thundercat, Nick Hakeem, Kali Ushis. I love that Kali Ushis album. Yeah, Ooh. I love that song so much. Oh, yeah, she's she's on fire. Um, who else? I've been listening to a lot of Kendrick Lamar. Never I heard of him. Ken yeah, he's he's this new cat on the block. Is it, is it? <laughs> well, I will. Should look him up. Yeah, I will say that the year 2015. I I, I don't I haven't told the story in a while, but I'll go ahead and tell you the Billy Joel Kendrick Lamar year. So uh, right <laughs> yes. before Billy Joel is a this is the class. This is my Billy Joel story. So uh, right before Billy Joel on the what stage of Bonnaroo was one of my favorite bands of all time. Spoon. I love Spoon with all my Spoon. heart. So. We're standing on stage for Spoon, and to get off the stage in the back, there's this long ramp that takes you all the way down to the artist group area or whatever. And so um, all of us are leaving the stage, and one person from afar is coming up the stairwell. And I, he gets closer and closer and closer and closer. And who is it? It's Billy Joel. It's Billy Joel. <laughs> and nobody, not one person has stopped this guy as he's coming up the stairwell. Not one person. You'd think if it's Billy Joel, somebody would have stopped and said, oh, my God, there's Billy Joel. Everybody not one person. <laughs> so I had to be the guy. I had to be the guy that stopped the piano man and said hello. So I, um, this is my moment, right? This is my moment. I get to stop and talk to Billy Joel. Oh just, man! Just, just, so, just to jump in, let's make sure we understand. This is a guy who makes a living talking, and this is yeah, what he says. That's right. 
trying to pull content out of my rear <laughs> is my life. Yes. I, uh, <laughs> so I, uh, I reach my hand out and I say, Billy Joel. And he looks at me, grabs my hand as if he's been waiting for this entire time for somebody to grab my his hand and shake it, like realize it's Billy Joel. He grabs my hand with authority, looks at me, and I go, great work. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go uh, my hand and says, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and then walks away. Yeah. Oh, there you go. That was Joel, my. Every time Billy Joel does an interview, somebody says, "What are the great moments that you remember in your career?" There was this <laughs> guy behind the what stage? <laughs> these, <laughs> the these, these pothead kids at Bonnaroo. They don't appreciate art. They don't care about me. I'm the piano man. I had Chris Tracy, <laughs> and all this jerk can say is good work. Oh man, Sons I blew it. Up. Sometimes you just can't. You just. I, there's some people who I I don't even know what to say, you know. I, well, I don't even. Devin, it was one of those moments where I realized I don't have anything to say to Billy Joel. Yeah, well, <laughs> I just right? don't have anything to say to him. I had I got to interview <laughs> Brian Wilson a couple of years ago. I I called my brothers who were huge fans because I I said I need help because I'm going to go Chris Farley. I'm going to be. So you were in the Beach Boys. <laughs> That's not that. what that was not the moment I had with Billy Joel. I just realized I just don't have I don't care. Uh, yeah, I no. Don't care. no. And that's me, honest, yeah. yo. That's so honest. Like I was at a I was at Capitol Congress in LA at this this party at Capitol and and Beck was like right like 10 feet away chatting with somebody and I was like I wanted to go over to him well, what and do you say and I was just like but I was like I don't have a damn thing to say to back right now <laughs> like hey loser baby am I right loser I'm a baby, loser right? baby right. you never heard you never heard that hey Loved Deborah e pro e pro step into my Hyundai right step into my Hyundai am I right what, like, what are you how about? Scientology? I mean, oh shoot! I didn't mean to say that. I didn't <laughs> mean to bring that up. <laughs> it really is a good point. I got to say this. I'm paralyzed with fear now. If Beck ever came into my life, because I love Beck. That is one of the mm -hmm. most fun shows you could ever see. But I have no earthly clue what the hell I talked to Beck about. Not no, one no. clue. I would Cowboy definitely hat. talk about Scientology. I would absolutely be like, so Beck, Scientology. Tell me about it. All about it. Everything. Why? <laughs> never, never leave his grasp. He, he would never, he would never he get out of his dip. talons. <laughs> so the cheese dip's pretty good. <laughs> aliens? Aliens, Beck? I will I get say, it. though, it is it is remarkable to like talk to Beck and, and think that whatever I'm saying to him right now might make a, a song in the future. Like whatever I say, he could put into a lyric that's gonna make no sense whatsoever. But I'm gonna be yeah. in a I'm gonna be in a Beck song at some point. That's that's why you gotta just say the craziest things when you great see point. Beck. You that's know, <laughs> man, just, I, I'm so I'm so happy for you. I uh, I love I love the album. I I love the cover album. I uh, think that you got the world the world in front of you. And if I can push anybody to a show on Thursday, it's Devin's. And uh, I hope that. But when Bonnaroo comes, you come back to Camp Nut Butter and hang out um, and uh, oh, yeah. chat, chat with us at uh, Lord Taco's bus. It's, I'm coming. Um, yeah, coming for the, the spoon. I'm coming for the whole. I want. I want a four spoons on <laughs> a whole spoon session, man. It's a, this has become it's a much different weird. podcast it's than we it's, anticipated. It's, this has gotten a very <laughs> weird podcast. Um, <laughs> hey, we can we can spoon you if you're vaccinated. <laughs> oh, I got the double Pfizer in me. Come on, you know. Yeah. Oh, me too. Yeah, well, Pfizer we, Bros. We, I got yeah. the. We only have one real rule, uh, Devin and Bonner, and that's no touching. So we're gonna have to. Yeah, we don't touch. Out. But well, no. Nope. Yeah, well, I, but I, I get that. You'll be there Thursday. I get that. Thursday's okay. It's Sunday. Yeah, so we do have we do have one rule. I tell anybody: uh, no sex. Don't have sex at Bonnaroo. It's just <laughs> oh, too yeah. Unless Ooh. it's the first day or the last day. First day, okay. <laughs> last day, you're all disgusting anyway, so what does it matter? But yeah. here's the best news. Uh, Taco is waxed, waxed, and ready to be a snack. So <laughs> you are... Oh, snap. Oh, snap. Head on my shots. 
So sad. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, Taco. Right. And we'll have more moonshine too. I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'll bring the guacamole. How about that? <laughs> oh man, you know we don't have a. The, Barry brings the pimento cheese. Barry, does the wife make guacamole too? Who brings the guac? I think Devin's bringing it. All right, you got the guac yeah. then, I guess. I love it. It's going right. to be great. I, got it. Oh, I right. love it. Devin, thank you so much for taking your time out for us, and, and we'll see you Labor Day weekend. I can't wait. We'll see you then. Oh, buddy. man, I can't wait. Brad, Barry, Taco, yeah. I will see you all, and thank you so much. All right. Thank you for having thank me. Thank you. This was see awesome. Appreciate Thanks y'all. soon. Yeah, anytime. Thank you. <laughs> Devin Gafillion on the What Podcast, which bands this year that matter, Lord Taco, Barry Quarter, Brad Steiner. Uh, before we get into the news about Foo Fighters in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, there is a headline at Consequences website about an old game show that I love to talk about here in a second. But before that, let's talk about the giveaway that's happening right now for Bonnaroo tickets. Bonnaroo's completely sold out, and guess who is getting you tickets to camp with Barry Quarter? These guys. Yeah. Are they going to be right into your tent, Barry? Are they going to be with you? We're going to have to have some filters. We'll figure that out. Um, but will that filter be dangerous? Will that filter be a security guard at the witch stage? Uh, keeping? <laughs> Maybe. We're going to have to find out if they can preach or not. <laughs> uh, I don't know what you're talking about. We haven't talked about that yet. We'll get okay. to that. So um, let's, uh, let's go through how you can win Bonnaroo tickets. Uh, Lord Taco has crafted... A fine, fine contest for you, the What Podcast listener. You're going to follow the What Podcast on Twitter, the What underscore podcast. I told you he was the best. Follow I told the What you he was Podcast the best. on Instagram. Wow. And make a tweet or, a, or a make an Instagram. Uh, make both. Double your chances. Uh, that. Tweet us. Tell us why you want to go to Bonnaroo. Share a memory about Bonnaroo. Share a picture maybe of your campsite one year. Yeah. Photoshop um, us into your campsite if you want to. Now that you know? now you're talking, you can get very creative with this. Photoshop Barry's tan onto my face. Ooh. I was thinking my hair on your head. Oh man. Oh wow. Okay. That would that would hurt. If would you hurt. really want, if yeah, if you really want bonus points, but uh, <laughs> hashtag it the what podcast so that we can find it, and that's all you got to do. That then you're entered. We'll pick somebody. Really. You have tickets okay. away too. And make sure you're following us so that we can DM you if you win, so that we can get you on the show or you know get your info. Yeah, it it look rate review share um, splice cut murder whatever the words are that the kids are using. Do those things, and it's just going to help your chances to win two count them two passes to Bonnaroo with a camping pass as well. And along the way, you know what? You know what? I, actually, I'm going to make an executive decision. We will throw in what podcast gear won't we love it okay maybe oh barry likes it because that's <laughs> <laughs> barry's gonna include the whole box <laughs> what size shirt you wear he's all of them yeah. how many koozies do you need <laughs> <laughs> anything to clear out this basement can you get that garage cleared out <laughs> you're gonna give them not only you're gonna give them what podcast material you're gonna give them an old band saw yeah. you're gonna give them some yep. Some, some fabric old, uh, that's been left over. Good housekeeping magazines. An old washer and dryer you've been trying to get rid of. Yes, you're going to win all the things in Barry Quarter's garage. It's very exciting for you. So you're get a grab a box. Yeah, grab so if it, box of stuff. <laughs> follow the What Podcast, the What Underscore Podcast on Twitter. I can never remember the Instagram. It's just the What Podcast on Instagram, just right? The what Podcast. Yep. Okay. Follow those two things. Uh, hashtag the What Podcast on Instagram and Twitter. Make a picture, make a uh, make a tweet, whatever it needs uh, to be to get our attention, and we'll pick a winner here in uh, probably two weeks or so, right? Yeah, soon, so they okay. can uh, yeah. make their we'll plan. See. All right, we've got uh, a ton of show left. So we we'll talk about the Who Fighters. I'm uh, going to talk about uh, some other things, including my favorite childhood game show, next on the What Podcast. Hang tight. Festival First Timers Part 2, starring Devin Gafillion. I uh, I hope that if you do anything um, other than listen to the show and then rate, review, and tell all your friends, and then uh, subscribe, and then follow us on Instagram and Twitter, after you've done those simple things, I really do hope that you spend some time with Devin. I, uh, I, I have a theory, Barry. 
I try to tell nobody. You know how people walk up to you and they're saying, you got to watch this show. This yeah. show is so funny. It is the funniest show. Ever. Well, what do you like about it? It's just great. Yeah. You it's know, good. people do that with music too, right? Um, I love, I love Cardi B. Well, why do you love her? Just love her. Well, what, you got to listen Different. to her. Why do I got to listen to her? You just got to. Just go listen to her. <laughs> I hate doing that to people. I don't want to ever be the person that's giving you something that you may not like. You know, <laughs> so yeah. I am never going to invite you to my house. You're never going to come over for dinner. I just don't have any faith that I'm going to give you something that you like. Yeah. I, which is you know, sort of the you know start of this show, to be honest with you, if you remember. <laughs> uh, but I don't. So I, I say this with I say this with all reverence. Please give him some time. Yeah. Give that album a try. I love it so much. I love him so much. And even if you don't like the 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 music, him as a person is just so phenomenal on every level. He's the kind of people that I want to root for. Yeah. In just this industry. Just want to yes. be around. Yes, he's Absolutely. infectious. His story about his dad being a wedding singer. That's a new one. That was funny. Never thought about that because we all have those cringeworthy moments with our parents. Doesn't matter how cool they are, good they are. Yeah. You know, his dad trying to learn a song. <laughs> it's just, it's just funny. We can all relate to that. I mean, he's cool. Yeah, I will great. say this. I will say this. Uh, have you ever, um, you know, when you're, uh, you know, you're courting a lady, Barry Quarter. You know, when you're you're looking for you're dating around and you think you found the one, uh, and you're trying to figure out when is an appropriate time to text her after the first date. You know, it really went well. You think it really went well and you, you know, like, yeah. maybe I need to wait a day. No, no, no. I'm just going to text her tonight. I'm going to text yeah, her tonight. I'm, I'm so excited. Yeah. I'm so excited. I had that conversation with myself after the Devin's interview. I uh, had to <laughs> talk to myself, talk to myself. I was like, well, can I text him now or <laughs> should I wait till them? I'll just do it now. I'll do it now. <laughs> So yeah, I texted him that night, and I felt like a total fool. Yeah, did he write back and say, "Who is this?" I mean, it was. Um, <laughs> I had to send him my Bitmoji to get him to remember who I was. Uh, but no, I, I feel I feel like we've got to we're, we're going to be pals. We're going to be dudes. Yeah, yeah. You know, I feel that way about Warren Treaty. I feel like we connected so much that I want to write to them all the time. Yeah. And well, I why don't you? Myself, they probably. Well, I have, and we've talked, and they. But it's it's one of those. I mean, repeat repeats the rare exception where we actually be, have become very good friends. I, uh, Warren the, Treaty the, is. Uh, I love Warren Treaty, but I just don't know if we have much in common. Uh, I feel like I do with them. I love. Do them. you? Oh yeah. I mean, they're preaching a lot. Well, you were you wanted to be a preacher. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so you got that. That is a story for a completely different show. And you got that in common. Do, Brad wanted to go to preaching camp. He's going to become a preacher. <laughs> I did not want to go to preaching camp. I went to preacher camp and I won a competition to be a preacher. And I realized, no, I'm not going to get to this. I can't. <laughs> that's fine. About. Or whatever. But I don't know. Hang if on, there's a preacher sick. camp? What do you it, do at preacher camp? You preach. <laughs> Um, I don't remember what it was, guys. Okay, it was it was like it was like 4-H for like Baptists, right? <laughs> it was like 4-H for church folk. And at the time, look, I'm trying to be I'll be very honest here. I am not a religious man, but at the time I really loved going to church because really, really, really pretty girls went to church. And I was hitting on very, very pretty girls. And I had an automatic in at school when I saw them the next day. We knew each other from what is it called? It's not Sunday school, but youth, youth, youth group. Yeah, from yeah. youth group. You so go. I had an automatic in. Well, what would be like the rock star in our world now? Who's the rock star of youth group? It's the it's the preacher. The youth He's preacher. either the rock star or not. Or dad. Yeah, I know. There's no it's, middle. It's, it's right. I <laughs> yeah, that's a great point. So, so I entered into this competition to be like win a preaching competition, and I thought that would get me some girls, you know. 
<laughs> I took an unorthodox way around. To, no, you know, you're not I, alone, but it's just funny. I'm I'm pretty sure that's not on the brochure. It is not. No. <laughs> come to preacher camp to pick up girls. Not camp. something I put on the resume. So I <laughs> anyway, I go there and I, I've whipped up this thing. All right. And if you guys know anything about me, I do a radio show for 21 years that is full of what, Taco? Fart jokes. Fart jokes. Got it. So I have been doing the same bit for 20 some odd years. Well, I I, I guess I, I started it all and learned it all from preacher camp. You can whip up any show and make people feel good about it. You know, if you got the right sort of recipe, watch the movie Leap of Faith. That's what I got. I, I literally took whatever the guy was doing on Leap of Faith, and that's what I did at preacher camp. And I whipped up something that made a couple of pass. I don't know. It was so sacrilegious what I did. So I get on the stage, and I'm whipping them into a frenzy. It's all hooting and hollering, and like Barry would say. And I win. The girls didn't come after that. That was not the recipe. I'm shocked. For success. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shocked that didn't work. Stunning. It didn't there work. Thinking, uh, he's too religious. I don't know. What <laughs> I was just coming here for the meet yeah, guys. I came here for the cute guys, yeah. not some preacher. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that these kids would be cool. Now they want to do is talk about Jesus. This is not yeah. what I wanted. He'd be a real drag on a date. Yeah, what a boring party. Don't ever invite him. He's going to talk about the Super Bowl of God. Um, so, uh, which, by the way, was the name of the, the thing that I whipped up. Um, so, I. Uh, <laughs> Can we have a preacher camp at Camp Nut Butter this year? That sounds fun. Mike Mike Dewar wins every year. So, okay, it's a long, ridiculously long, stupid story. Short. the The point is, is that afterwards, it didn't get me girls. It didn't get me anything that I that I set it out to be. I won some sort of medal. But what I did realize is the power that bullshitting gets you. And I'm not kidding about this. I have. I have. If there's one thing that has tied my entire career together. It was that moment at 15 years old winning a preacher competition based on a whole load of bullshit that I then weaved for the rest of my career. And what do I do to this day, Taco, on the air? Still still doing the bullshit. Still doing bullshit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> still, doing still doing it. There you go. There you guys go. Well, let's hey, bring you it back. Up the Warren Treaty up. don't it's have that. <laughs> <laughs> I love them. I don't I think Warren Treaty went to preacher camp. I'm pretty sure they don't consider me a friend, but whatever. <laughs> yes. Welcome to Preacher Camp. I, this is the What Podcast. I love Devin, too. I, just, I, I want to be around Devin. I hope we get to meet at uh, Bonnaroo. I think that was the point, yes. I'm sorry to take that into a completely no, bizarre direction. But yes, the point is I just like to hang out with Devin. I, I, think, I think for listeners, they have a fu- much better understanding of Brad Steiner right now. <laughs> I, I, He's I been think bullshitting you this whole time. The whole time. Whole time. I oh, feel like I look, I don't think I hide much when it comes to my professional career. I'm pretty I'm pretty wide open when it comes to these kind of things. Yeah, I, yep. you know, I don't, I don't think I hide anything from you guys. This is what you get. You get uh leap of faith. Steve Martin <laughs> whispering <Bowl>. lies <laughs> in people's ear. The final thing that I wanted to get to, I actually there's two more things I want to get to. I lied. Um, so we'll make this quick. One, uh, Bonnaroo headliner Foo Fighters uh, nominated for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Barry Corder, um, I didn't know the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame was still a thing. You know, you know my feelings on lists. As a as a newspaper guy, I have a love hate relationship with them. I read them; they make me mad, like everybody else, unless it's somebody I like. So I mean, that's why we do it. And the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, there's people in there that shouldn't be. Foo Fighters belong. I'm looking at the list. Mary J. Blige, Kate Bush, Devo. Absolutely. I love Devo. Go-Go's. Okay. Iron Maiden. Jay-Z. Yes. Look, it's gotten to the point where if you've had a hit, you're in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And it's the same reason why I hate the Hall of Fame in anything. They, they, they've they watered it down to um, if you showed up, you get in. Baseball's yeah, I mean, a little differently because they have a they have a very high standard. Like preacher, camp. Well, preacher camp, you win. 
Yeah. I could. I <laughs> mean, I have a problem up. with baseball Hall of Fame because nobody well, they won't do unanimous and all. I mean, that there's that political too. But I agree, you should have to earn it. I mean, Tina Turner's on this list. She should have been in a long time ago. Todd Grundgren, we can argue. New York Dolls, certainly uh, uh, um, game changing in their own way. LL Cool J, Carol King, absolutely. Why is LL Cool J in the Rock yeah. and Roll Hall of Fame? Because where else? Come there on. is no other hall. Because so. the so qualification because he sold to be a lot in the, of records. Yes, the qualification. There is. There are people who have gotten into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but they've done more than just make panties drop. <laughs> and LL Cool J has done nothing more than that. Anyway, it, uh, the, okay. So the point so, is, yeah, it, it's a discuss. It's the reason they do it is because people just like this. We're talking about it. That's yeah. why. It exists. Well, Foo Fighters are in it. Um, you know, I I still I'll say this. We'll probably do a Foo Fighters episode uh, one day because there's so much to sort of unpack with them. But I, I will say it again. I've said it before. Dave Grohl is the best ambassador for rock music that we have left he's the best one um he's insanely fun he's insanely uh open with his time um everybody loves him he's he tries to bring everybody into the to the operation there's just nothing bad about him and even if you don't like the music don't like the music but he is the best ambassador for rock music that we have period and i I, I don't know i don't know if anybody else moves the needle like he does he's the tiger woods of rock music i agree totally and then finally, the uh, last headline from Consequence that I saw today, Taco, um, and this is really for you. Legends of the Hidden Temple will get an adult reality show. Oh, yes. um, I am obsessed yes. with this idea, uh, mainly because, well, first off, you were a Legend of the Hidden Temple kid, weren't you, on Nickelodeon? Yeah, I mean, that was right along with like Finders Keepers and Double Dare. Yeah. Okay, now we're talking. Yeah. All right, that, so that's in all the same the realm. Things, of all the things that you could create an adult reality show over, right? Of all of the 90s Nickelodeon game shows that you had that you could create an, an adult reality, why Legends of the Hidden <laughs> Temple? It was so That's stupid. so much else to work with. The whole, exactly. The whole show was built on you finally get into the temple, a kid runs around, and then boom, somebody runs outside of the door and scares the kid. That's it. That was the whole bit. Why not do adult double dare? Why not do adult Finders Keepers? Finders Keepers was my favorite show as a kid because that house was so fantastic and you got to trash it. What more I know, fun. That's what everybody wants to do. Yes, even as an adult. Do you know yeah. how badly I'd love to trash this house right now? <laughs> <laughs> I, if it wasn't my house, I would love to yeah. do that. I wouldn't but, recommend it. I well, well, yeah, because I'd have to be the one that cleans up. No one else here does. <laughs> Uh, why is it that that's got to be the show of all the shows? You know, so I, I had this argument with a friend of mine all the time. If I'm going to watch an old Nickelodeon show, I'm watching the best old Nickelodeon show, which of course is, hey, dude, don't give me the adventures of Pete and Pete. How dare you <laughs> look at me and give me the adventures of Pete and Pete or something like that? I was actually going to say Pete and Pete. Yeah, I know it. But but why not go for like Double Dare? Double Dare is the game that would t- forget Supermarket Sweep. Give me Double Dare. Yeah, if you're gonna remake one show, why is it know, a Double Dare? Barry, uh, my dad uh, one time promised me he was going to build me a Double Dare course in our backyard because I so badly wanted to slide through the big giant lips into a pool of green slime. <laughs> And grab a flag. <laughs> do you do you think that he built that for me? No, never happened. So, yeah, that's why they, they didn't have they didn't have that at preacher camp either. No, this is why <laughs> I am the way that I am, guys. Yeah. I didn't I'm just get, gonna guess denied on the your dad who made a lot of promises. It was either the green slime or the big lips he was struggling <laughs> with on how to do make that. <laughs> it yeah, always sounds like a good promise until the reality hits. How am I gonna make these giant lips? Yeah. My bet is that he made the lips. He just never shared them with me. Uh, <laughs> All right. Yeah, uh, there you let go. me hang a bed sheet and you just pretend they're big. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> All right. Next week, I'm really excited about this. Almost Monday's AR guy. So, what is AR? AR, we'll talk about this in depth next week. But AR is artist and, and, exactly. It's the hardest yeah. question 
in the industry to answer? Oh, repertoire. Repertoire. Okay, I did okay. not know. Exactly. Okay. What does an AR guy do? Who right. is who are these AR guys? Well, AR guys find the bands that you listen to and then craft their entire career and are the ones that curate everything about that career. All right. One of which Mike Daly from Hollywood Records is our guest next week on the What Podcast. Really excited about this. If you like the booking episode, if you like the booking agent episode, you're going to love a conversation with an A&R guy. It's something I've been dying to do for my entire career. I had one one night with the the head of, of A&R for Interscope Records. It was a game changer. I'm excited about this next week. That's Laura Taco. That's Barry Quarter. I'm Brad Steiner. We'll talk to you next week at Preacher Camp with the What Podcast. Love you, man. Consequence Podcast Network.